Hello everyone, you are on the Artifacto channel, where renowned artists showcase their skills and share secrets with those who want to improve their painting ability. My name is Nicholas Tobias, I've been teaching watercolour for many years, and I suggest we dive into the process of watercolour painting and explore new facets of creativity. So let's, first thing we do, I'll get another brush, a little bit smaller. Remember we mixed up this purple here, well, I'll just make sure I've got don't know why that's got a bit of green on it. Um, I'll just remake that a bit. Okay, so I've got a bit of purple here, and there's not. It's not a really wet brush. Let's say it's medium. It's it's, it, it's this is going to spread, but it's it's a medium. It's not it's not thick like the others. It's got a bit more wet on it. Now this is still very wet. Now that's great because if we want to do some wispy clouds like this, see what I'm doing with my. I'm just squiggle squiggling like that. And maybe a little bit more squiggles, but just don't go overboard with this. Um, up top is actually, I didn't wet that properly, so I'll just get rid of that a bit. But see how wispy that is. And that is now going to be expanding out. And you'll think, oh, it's quite defined at the moment. But by the end of it, when it's completely dry, that's going to be quite quite nice. So just a little bit, a few wispy cloud, clouds there for fun. Maybe I can do a tiny bit more at the bottom here, just like so. We connect it a little bit, but yeah, let's not go overboard. And now we're just thinking about the blue and we've got a little bit of breathing space. Um, you wanna make sure also if it's buckling a bit that it uh, runs down, the water runs down, but here we go. Um, the next thing to do is, well, we've got this blue that we've mixed. So that's waiting for us we can get ready with it and essentially you just have to see for yourself look at it quite closely look is it is it drying or is it not drying up here it looks like it's drying quite strongly i might need might even need to re-wet this side here a little bit more because it's clean water i can do it i can do that um and let me just uh do one thing before we start that but get ready with the blue and we need to make sure that we have not too much water on the brush before we start. Um, now I'll just plug this laptop into the charger just so that we can keep the show going. But right, we're ready now. Okay, so let's let's get the blue and just give it a little test. Look at that, that's quite strong. It's really quite wet there, but I think it will be fine. It's gonna melt out well and enough. And here we can just let it go a bit, but we can just give a little bit of a line like that. That's a bit more strength, that's fun. Um, and then let's just come down with it. Maybe a few little holes, white holes or whatever, but we don't need to worry too much. And we can cut over this bit as well. Don't worry about that. So, and let's just bring it down, get quite quick and nice with it here. Uh, maybe there's a few little holes in there, etc. stuff going on. Um, but we can now change into the next bit that we've mixed up. So we'll, let's bring that onto our brush. I can pop this other brush down. And like quickly, we're just going to cut into it. So we're essentially doing what we did with one of the thumbnails, which was the first one we did where we were layering. So I'll bring it up quite a lot. Let's get a bit of definition in the top there. This is all very wet, so it's going to dry quite nicely. But when it comes to the bottom, we're just going to try and really use what we have here um, on the side of our palette. And now we move to... Um, well, before we do that, just make sure there's no hard edges here. So with a relatively dry brush, see that? I'm just going to soften this if it's dried on me. It just it just needs to be more wispy if, if, if you've got any bit like that. I hope you enjoy this video. I always strive to provide useful content for my viewers and students. If you're interested in delving deeper into watercolor techniques and painting principles, I encourage you to join me in my new workshop. We'll explore dynamic sketches and create captivating final pieces. 
So check out the link in the video description to register for free. I'll see you there. And now you can see I've had this brush on the side that I haven't been using, and this has got this lo lovely vibrant green. So here we go, we pop that in there, bring that over. Um, and we can actually bring it over this bit as well, and even into here, and just bring it up a bit, uh, and maybe over here as well. And just see, I'm just making these major shapes. Make sure to not go over the road. Leave a line if you can. Of course, if you if you do go over the road, don't worry about it. Um, you can just, with a piece of paper, just dab it down completely. Don't rub it, just completely dab it and you'll get rid of it. But you see, I've left that little thing there. And I'm just going to do this quite quick. So I, my brush is big enough that I can just go over this quite quickly, cut over the car and here as well. So left the car completely. Maybe I'll cut this just because I can. This is drying quite fast, but that's okay. Um, and we've got a bit more here. So I'm going to just bring it all around. And again, up, up to about this area. So we're just cutting around all the stuff we want to leave sort of white or a different color. So there we go. And then the top bits, well, I'll use what I've got, but I'll bring in a bit more of this cooler. And when I say cooler, I mean a bit more blue up in the top here. And this doesn't need to be so vibrant, does it? Because we're just approaching the end of uh, uh, the top part. Uh, maybe I'll, Add in a bit here while it's drying, it's just a bit of fun, etc. But and then you can sort of define this bit if you want. But really, we're going to go in with another wash. So, and the last thing before we finish this, we'll leave the car, we'll, we'll let that just do its own thing, um, is to add in some more brownie, brownie green. See that? It's quite dark. I've had some brown in there. I've got some green in there. You can add some some sort of Payne's gray if you want. Just darken it up. If it's too much water, if it's too watery, you can just dry your brush somehow and then go again with some pigment. Just get it quite thick. And we can sort of add some definition in, in this side here. Um, just so that we don't have to tackle it too much towards the end. We can just sort of let this part be finished. Uh, it comes up through here and there's some stuff going on there. Uh, maybe this can be a bigger shape. See that? I've just made it a bigger shape because it was a bit too fiddly. Um, and I'll, we'll, we'll add some more. We'll define that a bit better later on, but that's okay for now. Okay. So very last thing, clean water. And it can cut, it can, the, the, the grass and stuff can, can, you can hit the grass. It's, it's okay but just make sure you're not bringing green into the center. And this is all white up top. Uh, and we're just gonna wet it, wet the bottom now, like we like we usually do in a gradient. Wet that nicely. And again, we're just thinking about drying time. So um, I'm just going to wait a, a, a little bit. Um, And while we're waiting for it, we can mix up a gray. So I'm going to use this purple bit that I did on the side here. So blue, red to make a purple. And how would you make three? Sorry, <laughs> I'm giving that away a bit. How would you make two? Um, wait, that doesn't make sense. How would you make a gray? <laughs> <laughs> well, you mix up the three primaries. That's what I was trying to get at. And it did not come out. But there we go. So blue, red, and yellow. Uh, I've already got yellow there. So that's sort of a warmish. So I'll go a bit more into the a blue. And what do we want? It want? We want a bit more of a gray, warmish sort of gray. Um, okay, that's quite strong. And you can see it's, 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 it's in the middle consistency wise it's in the middle um 
and let's do it while this before this dries oh look at that can you see that look how strong that is and we're just going to bring it up horizontal marks just same same brush and let the water absorb it and see how it's just fading out naturally as i move up horizontal strokes not all the way uh, we want to leave that light because this will be all much darker. So we want that, what wants to be some nice light there. And what I'll do is I'll go back in with the same brush, just get the rest of that stuff and then do another strong bit at the bottom there. And again, just come up again. We're just caressing the paper. And as we come up, see that? We're just making a nice gradient and that should, um, that should dry quite nicely. Um, so... It will, it will dry lighter and this will be relatively white, but um, it should be good. So that's the first wash. We'll come back when it's dry and we'll, and we'll do the second wash. So let's mix it up. We've got, I've already got a bit of darkness in here. So I'm gonna use this as my darkest area. Put a bit of water in there because I want to mix, mix up a good amount. Let's get some strong amount of green. Uh, really get some big green, big amount of green there. Already, I'm going to sort of warm it up, put a bit of red in it, and that just dulls it down. You put a bit of red into green, whatever green you've got, the red is going to sort of act as a as a way to make it a bit more of a grey, uh, and that's and that's useful. And then if you put a bit of yellow, it turns it into a bit more of a standard green rather than a very dull green. And this needs to be um, more vibrant, warmer than this, right? So as long as this is not particularly blue and a bit more of this sort of not dark green, we're, in, we're, in, we're onto a winner. Um, and what I'll do is I'll get this bit. I've got some some of it on my brush already, but I've added in some Payne's gray. And look at that, that's absolutely strong right there. Really thick. It, this, it is still sort of dark green, you could say, but bordering on just a real dark sort of blacky color. And now we've got, the two things that are going to help us bring this down. Um, and actually, I think we're almost ready to go. I can't really think of anything else that's incredibly necessary just yet. Maybe we'll mix mix a bit of this light to get a bit more definition here. But I think that's good for us. So, um, well, first things first, let's start with the top. Um, I won't use this brush just yet, but something like this is useful when we want to create these bigger shapes within the darkness. It can't all be these small, tiny little leaves. You have to have a little bit of leaves and then think about these bigger chunks of the darkness. And that is gonna help us define this in a nice way, keep the shapes relatively big because it, it, it becomes a bit too much if everything's small. So I'll leave that there for a sec, but let me just dry this a bit, get some thick, paint in and here we go let's go for it so maybe actually i can even use this to do some of the dark bits um like so so just kissing the paper it's dry everything's dry which means that the marks you leave and if you put the side of the brush give it some some just caress the paper a little bit and then come down with some bigger marks maybe this whole side can be a bit dark there just squiggle in a bit, um, but we can leave some nice little marks uh, of trees there and stuff. And I might go in with a smaller brush when I'm coming out a bit further, but that seems to me like a good amount to go out with this bit more dark, with this dark stuff. And maybe I'll actually add a little bit more, tiny bit more dark to that, because it's going to fade a bit. Okay, I'll try and break up. I've done a big shape there give a little bit more of this stuff see-through stuff uh, and then we come down and here we're going to let this melt into a lighter part of it so i'll get a bit of darkness in here i think i can even go stronger to be honest get a bit of this green and just really get quite dark as a contrast because this is going to melt down as we go down so there we go. We've got our first bit. Um, remember I said, I just think with a smaller brush, just a little few more details. I'm going to draw a line with this brush. You can use another bigger if you want, but it's okay. Just a few little things. It's quite nice to add 
some details um, and it is working quite well. Maybe there's another, some other branches that come through like so. Um, and then there's some stuff going on here as well. But to be honest, um, it's easy to overdo this and you just want to step back a bit and think, okay, how is it working? Is it, is it working quite well? Um, do I need a bit more information? And, and just take your time a little bit because we wet the back, so we've got a bit more time. But I'm also thinking about this edge here. You don't want it to dry. I want to mix in some of this nice green into that as well. So I'm conscious of that while I'm doing this bit here. Um, and I think I'm good. I'm happy. It's, that's enough information. This comes out quite far, but that's okay. So now with one of these brushes, it's got the dark, but it's got a bit of this. I'm going to add into this green and just transition into it. And now be a bit more sort of bold with with the brush marks come down quite a lot uh, maybe i shouldn't maybe i should leave some bits of of stuff but it, i think it's okay um and again this line needs to be done this line here needs to be done quite well uh, and i don't want to leave really strong gaps like that it needs to be a bit smaller so with one of these brushes that you've got on the side, the smaller one, um, we can just get maybe a bit more blue, a tiny bit more blue, and just create some some trees there, some stuff going on. But what I would say is don't make it too busy. Don't make it too busy. If it can sort of can connect, I mean, you could even put if you wanted to drop a tiny bit of water there just let things melt a tad you know it always creates some nice effects but let's let's come down now so let's bring a bit more water into this a bit more green um we're going to go a bit more yellow and yellow and red into it so let's warm it up a bit but keep it relatively dark remember um and i'm trying to think now the edge of this don't just make complete block of darkness. Let's, let's now really think about leaving some of the underwash. Um, and I can even come in a bit with this lighter stuff and bring it up a bit if I feel like it's gone a bit too dark up top there. So, okay, but we can cut round stuff, cut round the, the sign. Uh, leave a bit there, be a bit bold, but also don't go over all this light stuff. We want to things to melt in. So I'm just blocking in some of these major bits that I can see. There's a bit of it there, and there's some stuff going on here, um, and there's a bit of stuff going on there, and there's a tiny bits here. But this is what we can do. Because this is quite thick, and because we're working wet on dry, I can get a piece of clean, a brush with clean water and just allow this stuff to melt a bit. Just, just kiss the edge of this. I'll bring it up in a sec to help you see what I'm doing. Um, but I'll just get a few effects first. So maybe I can bring this to the side for a sec. And I've, I've blotted in some really strong stuff there. You can see that. And just, I can see how I'm just adding in a bit of water and letting that run together. And that creates some nice running effects. And um, it doesn't, it's not all the time. I can leave some hard edges as well. But if I just leave a bit of darkness, sorry, if I just cut into the darkness with some light, it will run down. See that? That will run down into here now. Um, and what else do we want to do? Soften this a bit. Uh, you can't see that, sorry. Soften this a bit, etc. So we've got a bit of time just to make this a bit more defined. Um, and I, I will go in with this small brush and again, maybe get a bit more darkness and then think even more about where I want things to be. Um, it sort of comes down a bit more. And yeah, that's okay. 
Speaking of different techniques, watercolor techniques, we have a question from Dave. Do you sometimes lift out color with a clean wet brush or a towel or a Q-tip? Yes, um, I usually use a piece of paper like the one I've got here. Um, I'll just crunch it up and it, I've, I find it difficult to, to be quite strong with it. So I would usually like, so it's good on a really big area so on like this if i felt like this needed a bit of light coming into it it's quite thick uh, maybe it needs to to come up here a bit lighter what you can do is you can just create some texture which is actually really nice to do if i bring that up a bit more uh, and i'll take the sheen off if i can if i if you do that and just dab it a bit you are now creating some light within it and because the paper has a quite nice texture you then create a bit of texture uh, if I can take the sheen away Ta -da, like that create some nice interesting effects so play around with that um, I do do it. Uh, it, it it definitely is good so up here if it's too strong you can reintroduce a bit of light into it um, and then it saves you from having to cut round and create hard edges in places as well so I would say it's really really good to try and see if you can do that. So um, I'm just going to have a little think about how this is doing. Um, we only need to, I think I'll add, reintroduce some water and just smooth out some edges. So make some of this a bit bigger. See that? I'm making bigger shapes now. I'm just readjusting. I think um, it was getting a bit too fiddly. And you do want some defined areas uh, within this bit but you also do want some bigger bits um, that's important as well a mix of big and small shapes okay so i think we're we're doing well this is coming in through here do we want to do a bit more to this well maybe we do maybe we want to add a bit more definition so let's try and just see if we can get a bit of this dark and just see if we can find a bit more stuff going on here. Maybe this is all dark um, and maybe a bit more blue. That's a sort of shadow area. And again, if it's too busy, just make it one bigger shape. Um, I'm sort of happy with that. Maybe a bit of bobs and bits and bobs here to find this edge a bit better. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Um, what I'd say is, what we need to do now is think about the car. Um, of course, you can you can go in a bit up here if you wanted to with a bit bit more definition but it, it gets it gets um misty very quickly so be careful if you want to add some more definition here you what you are very more than welcome to maybe i'll add a little bit of stuff and you can basically turn it a bit more blue um to create some shadows up top if you want this to sort of read a bit stronger before it fades out see what i'm doing but be careful with your brush marks um, and you can also add some water in this. So what I'll do is clean water, just soften some of these edges on the side. Um, like so. So there is some definition, but not too much. Okay. Um, another thing is if you have a bit here with this piece of paper you can blot in and just remove some of its strength if you feel like things are just too strong maybe if this comes back a bit then this becomes more defined uh, and the same thing here but i think we're i think we're good um the last thing i would say is before we head onto the car get a bit of brown and we can just outline some of the streets 
the edge of the street here um, and here as well this time with a lot lighter brown it's almost a sort of gray brown really but that's that's quite nice just to to define the end of this um, and there is actually a whole side bit here which is a different color maybe you can really lightly do it in a bit of different color like this it's a lot of water hardly any other color maybe i'll add a bit on the sides of it just to just to create a bit of interest around the side but be careful with this line that you leave you want it to be in sort of line with the rest of the street the rest of the road and i'm actually going to break that up a bit down there so we're just creating a bit more information there for us and a bit of darkness at the bottom um, at the back there um so let's go for the car and then we can just assess where we're at i think we're pretty much there um for the car i'm going to be quite true to the to the reference um you can make you know any color you want but I'm going to go for a sort of gray, a sort of bluey gray color. Um, quite dark, I would say. And this is quite thick pigment. So I, what I'll do is I'll do. Oops, that's not enough water. Didn't didn't really. There you go. You should be able to do that quite nicely, as in just do one large brushstroke or a couple of brushstrokes to fill it. If you can't and it's too staggered, you haven't got enough water. Um, and so we'll just build that for a sec and then probably do the wheels as well. I wanna make sure it's wet um, because it, it shouldn't be dry just yet. We're gonna melt things in a little bit and. do it that way um because now we can get a bit of red now i'm going to use just a strong red um any red that you've got cadmium red works or if you want to use alizarin crimson which i've got or just want to use the rose madder which we can which i've got as well um this is pyrrhal scarlet the brightest of my reds any any sort of mix i guess it, it Having it more of like a rose mattery color would would be would work well. But let's just the really thick, difficult to see. I can I can I can tell if I can do that. There we go. Drop that in. Um, if I do it sideways, you can see. <laughs> um, now. What you can actually do with your nail is scratch a little bit of the plate, license plate. See that? I just just scratched it. Uh, I'll try and scratch it like so, so it actually looks okay. But while it's wet, if you scratch like that, it just creates a bit of light there, just to just to help the viewer and know that it's um there's a bit of light there and it's it's a license plate and then the top bit well um it mostly be white so i'll put clean water there first and then maybe a little bit of blue onto the windscreen just not all, all not everywhere just on parts of it um and i'll actually get a bit of dark color and cut around the top just to make sure it's flat. Otherwise, there's maybe on one side as well. Don't forget to add in the mirrors just quite nicely and quickly. Um, and you might want to reintroduce a bit of the dark at the bottom if it's sort of faded off a bit. And we want to connect it to the ground and how do we do that well we do that by adding a shadow so i'm just going to see that the the wheels are now wet 
and I'm just going to do a nice sort of smooth line, a bit more to the right. See that? A bit more to the right. Just try and make it, make them horizontal. Where you'll go wrong is, is if you don't make these lines relatively horizontal. Um, and it's less important about making them fade out as long as the shape is good. Um, so that's, that'll, that'll, that'll be nice. With a relatively dry brush, I'm just drying it, clean water and then drying it. You can just fizzle out on one side a bit, like so. And if you wanted to, a tiny bit on the end. There's basically no water in this brush, and that allows me to just fizzle out the end without it being such a problem. Um, and that's quite high, but that's okay. That's okay. So, final detail on the top of the car. Um, other bits and bobs I want to include. Well, if you've got white with you, you can just add some white to create the lines of this. Um, I, I'm just going to use black because it's okay. But if you want to color in, I'm going to use a bit of red, a bit of orange. Color in this sign. Like so. I don't mind if it bleeds a little bit. I do have to be careful that I've cut around this and now it looks like it's got a green halo. So with, again, clean brush, just going to absolutely get rid of one side of that. See that? Just brush that away. So that one side is clear and doesn't look like it was just a cutting halo. Maybe I'll bring this up a bit as well. There we go. That's a bit better. Um, okay, tiny bit more definition on some of these, some of these bits of foliage. Maybe we can add in a bit of blue, and that sort of is quite nice if we add a tiny bit of blue, just because it reflects the blue that we see behind there. So, um, and there's a few little bits of stuff, more detail here, which would be quite nice to include. Um, Okay, so we're nearing the end. Um, and I'm just thinking about final piece, final bits and pieces. There's the yellow um, of the road as well, which we can we can try and add in. It'll be quite good to add some opaque paint to this mix, but if you don't, you just have yellow with you that's fine or if you've got chinese white which is chinese watercolor add a little bit of that to this yellow mix that works as well but i'll just assume you don't have it and we'll just do this together so a bit of strong yellow this is completely dry um very little water in this so we'll, hopefully it will break up on us so it's not just one straight line we have a bit of a staggered effect and to do that you can dry it even more so i'm just going to dry it on my on my um what's that called sponge there we go uh think about com the perspective right so if remember we had our vanishing point around here so we want the the line to come around here and it can curve a little bit but mostly and don't go underneath the car because it will look like the car is is on the wrong side of the road and so even if it helps you put that line there and just lightly come round like so. Uh, oops, like so. That's okay. If I do the other line a bit more like that, I think that'll work. Or maybe even a bit straighter and a bit bigger. Um, and yeah, you can use the tissue if you want to just make it a bit more lost and found. Dab, dab, dab. You don't want to have a real strong sort of um, complete line there. It, you know, it is good to sort of let it fizzle out a bit and etc. But okay. 
um, very finely. I I personally can use a rigger brush. Like so. And I'm just going to draw some lines. So one line here, one line to connect the um, sign with the, with the ground. Uh, and if you wanted to, you can actually scratch on this because it's this still wet. So you could probably scratch in, see that? A few little lines just to indicate trees, but be careful, don't make the lines too thick. I think that was arguably be too thick. So use the side. And there's some stuff going on here. Um, and maybe a tiny few lines. It's so easy to overdo that. So actually, I'd, I'd say, Maybe I can make it this white line if I scratch through. Not really. I think I might need a a black line for that bit there. Um, but these are final touches. This is just like I'm just thinking now about how things are, and um, but really, I think we're in a good place. Um, I hope this video was helpful for you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel where we assist all individuals in mastering drawing skills and immersing themselves in the wonderful world of art. Uh, I'd love for you to join me in my free workshop, so follow the link in the video description, and I will see you there soon.